Hey, welcome back to my channel. I thought it would be really fun to make more personal videos for you guys where I show you my process of creating art, going through things, how I deal with them. Because I feel like I'm in this state where I'm trying to figure out the next steps in my life, career-wise. Because I feel like I've been doing the same things for years and I feel like I need something new, something more that I can work towards too. So I got really excited about about creating art that makes me super happy. Like I felt like I'm not connected to my art anymore. I couldn't really associate myself with what I created. And I now want to listen to myself more. I want to create art that is truly me, that really represents my obsessions or just like things that make me happy, that inspire me without thinking about like, would people like that or not? Because I mean, we as artists, we should focus on what makes us happy, create art that makes us happy, because then we will be so proud of it. We won't be listening to anyone who said, oh, that's not art or um, this is really ugly. Because if you truly, truly believe in what you create and the style you create in, the topic that you focus on, then it doesn't matter because then people who really enjoy what you're doing will come and then you create this whole community of people who really can connect over your art. And I think that's super important. Today, um, I want to start a new series for an art collection kind of thing. And this idea actually came through the collaboration that I'm going to do today with my friend Melanie from Visual Mind. We thought it would be fun to challenge ourselves and use a very tiny, tiny sketchbook that we got at a trade show together. It's a zigzag book by Hanni Mühle and you can open it like that. And it's like a mini version of the original bigger size of the sketchbook and I was really struggling I, I really couldn't think of anything I could do so I went back to the tactics that usually help me and that's just brainstorm anything that I like and the first thing that always comes into my mind is cats. I'm at the point where I'm like, I don't even care if people think I'm crazy because I love cats. So I thought it would be really fun to create a collection with cats, something that represents them maybe and even try out a new style. I will walk you through the whole process of me creating the whole art collection. So first, I usually like to brainstorm ideas. So in this case, the theme is cats and cats are so versatile. They have so many different emotions and characters and they behave a certain way. So I was just thinking about like cats. What do I associate with them? Cats like cuddles, cuddles sometimes they don't. Also, they have very funny habits sometimes. Like they like to play with wool. Yeah, what else? Um, they also like to sleep in weird, weird positions. So maybe sleep on human in a crazy way. I think sometimes when we sit down to paint something, we stare at the blank page and I'm like, okay, what should I paint? But I think if you just really brainstorming, even just on paper, just writing down, you kind of flush it out and you see what you could work with. And the cool thing about creating small pieces of art is that you don't have this huge piece of white paper where you feel overwhelmed because it's just so much space to fill. But if you have a very tiny small square to fill in, I think this is so much easier. So I think um, this is something I can work with. And I also thought that because it's a square, maybe I can make it into some kind of stamp because I mean, the cool thing is that it's it's like a, this continuous page, but I think sometimes when you, for example, have like a collection of cards or whatever, you sometimes like, and you have like a massive collection of something. All right, so now since I have the general idea where I'm going with this, and I also decided on making it into stamps, I want to look for designs of older or current stamps to see what's out there. So for that, of course, I'll go to Pinterest to see what people uploaded there. And also fun to just look through some of the designs and see, for example, this is cute. This girl, this girl is cute, but doesn't spark joy in me when I look at it. This is more something like it's, it's like these birds, they have very interesting style. Or this here, it's very, very unique and colorful. This one is simple, but it conveys so much. For example, when you browse through styles and paintings, you are drawn to something more than to something else. And this 
We can also tell you exactly, for example, these are colors that I feel drawn to. Maybe I should use them in my art or maybe a style. It's really not about copying a certain style, but get an idea, for example. If you see something that's super simple, maybe there's something you could try. You can play around with it. So I noticed that I really like a very simple and colorful design. I don't want to make it too detailed. And actually what made me so excited to create new art that makes me happy is the fact that I got myself an iPad Pro with Procreate and I can finally use an iPad Pen because I used to have this mini iPad where I had to use some random stylus and it just doesn't respond well with Procreate but it was just such torture. Now I can easily sketch and erase and adjust things. It's just and with Procreate it's so fun to create something new because it's so easy. You can erase things, you can create multiple layers and adjust things, move things around. Sometimes the reason we don't do certain things is because there are just too many steps in between, too many challenges in between, it's too hard. But when we make it easy for ourselves, everything that we want to do becomes a lot easier for us. So. So here I have this just single sheet of paper on my Procreate where I just add as many ideas that I have. The point here is just really getting the ideas down on the paper. Now I just started with very simple drawings of cats where we're sitting and different expressions of smiling and maybe being sad or eating something. Just getting an idea of how I want to create the cat. I didn't want to make it super realistic, more a cartoon but not too cartoonish, just something in between. Um, so I played around with so many different variations, moved the ears around, moved the tail around, made the paws different friend and just allowed myself to play and I also asked you guys to send me in some ideas on what name should I give the cat because I feel like it's one cat and we should name it so it's cute and we can connect with the cat a little bit more the cool part with procreate is that you can really resize and readjust I started with a huge cat and then I could make it smaller and then I could just in a new layer I could draw over it and I really like the expressions the cat has it's a very cute and sometimes very like sneaky and maybe a little bit smug also I added the different emotions of being happy a little like doesn't want to cuddle with you but then she is so oh look at me I'm so cute it was really really fun to create all that because it's something I, I love cats and it was really fun to just, you know, draw something that's from my passion through some weird obsession and just playing with things I like. So here we have the names Meiko, Neko, Mia, Miomi, and Mimi, Mi, Miko, Kiko. These are very cute names. You need to let me know what name we should take for the cat. I really like Mimi, Miomi, that's a cute name. or. Miko. Miko is really cute. I think Miko fits this cat really well. Yeah, so the important thing is just fill the sheet with drawings and sketches. Don't think about too much like how pretty or how ugly it looks. It just It's just a general idea. Place random things wherever you want, see what works, what doesn't, and yeah, just have fun. I also really like the idea of the cat just sleeping on top of you, like in a weird position. I think this is my favorite, like, it's like crazy how cats are sometimes. And now I can just go ahead and look through anything that I like, that I want to work on first and see if this looks good. So I really enjoy this cat that it was so fun to read all your thoughts about what this cat is actually thinking. I also like the cat that's like pushing away you from the, from the cuddling. So here is the cat, I copy it and then I'm gonna open a new layer and put it on top and fill it the whole screen and move it around a little bit. So, it's, so now we can just go ahead and start sketching. Just on top, so like I have a few favorites, a favorite brushes that I'm playing around with and see what I like best. I came to terms that it's just like if you feel a certain style at this moment, then you should paint in this style. If you don't feel it in two days, 
it's fine too it's, it's like with instagram like you have this thought it needs to look beautiful you need to create a beautiful feed and then you get so stressed about that and then you just po don't post anything at all and i think if you are so caught up in finding the perfect style then you won't do anything at all i think just follow your intuition and don't stress so much so on a new layer you can just paint over it and you can just adjust you can also adjust like how the flow of the pan is like the streamline i usually like i, I don't like it too, too perfect i like it when it's a little bit the lines are not super straight or super curvy now i started off with different brushes like i really liked first the ink type of brush but then i switched to the mono line I wanted to make a stamp out of it. I also already kind of created this frame around it to see how it looks. I also changed around the whole thing multiple times. Like I adjusted the outlines, I changed the brush that I used, I changed the colors. I also redid the whole objects in it to create different like different layers um, so I can easily work on them and don't have to worry about another layer. It went through a lot of stages. I also like to add a filter on top, like this greeny filter, because I feel like it makes it look so vintage. Like it's colorful, but it's subtle. And I also really like the idea of the cat pushing the person away. I outlined it very roughly first, adjusted the framing, because I felt like the human is a little bit too much in the frame. So I just, you know, I just played around with it. Another thing that I really liked is the cat that is on the wool ball. It was really fun to play around with it. And I also, sometimes when you create different designs and put them next to each other, you notice differences. And you, for example, here I wanted to make the cat theme similar. So I wanted to make the cat look similar throughout the whole collection. So I moved around the eyes, the ears, everything to make it look similar. I adjusted the colors and played around to see like I wanted to keep the color schemes cohesive and it can collect them together or hang them up together and you know they belong together so that was really important to me. Now the reason why I chose Procreate to sketch everything out is because I wanted to already have something digitally but also i already have like everything planned out and i can use that to actually transfer it into my sketchbook i mean this is not a real sketchbook where you just sketch out the small ideas or something like that i wanted to curate it and i think that's that's totally okay you can have a very messy sketch paper messy sketches you don't have to show it to anyone but you can also curate something from your messy sketchbook that's totally fun too it really depends on how you approach things a sketchbook is there to or just a piece of paper is there to flesh out all the ideas be messy play around and that's the whole point you don't have to show it to anyone you can use those ideas and put it onto another piece of paper into canvas wherever you want to create your art so don't feel like you have to make it look perfect. I, I try my best to show you more of my messy sketches because the more we are exposed to all the different sketches, the more we realize and learn that we all have different types of sketches. Everything looks different and that's okay. Your sketch is there for you to figure out an idea. It doesn't matter how beautiful and messy it is, it's okay. And we shouldn't be ashamed of that because it's part of the process, it's part to have messy, ugly sketches to create beautiful art. Now the other idea that I had was the cat sleeping on a person. With every sketch that I had, I started out with a black outline and then I colored everything in. But then I realized I really like the style without any outline. I really like the big areas of color next to each other. And it was really fun to just see that. When you put something onto paper or here to procreate, you get familiar, like you see something already and you can, okay, I'm not feeling it. And then you can work from there. You slowly develop an idea, a style, and you play around with it. And it's so much fun to me because, because if you have this idea, like this perfect idea in your head and you want to recreate that, it doesn't work. You should be happy about the fact that your first idea didn't work out because most of the times the first idea isn't that great. So it's best that you flush it out and see, okay, this doesn't work, good. Um, let's move on and figure out something that is even better than that. And I think we we'll sometimes forget about that. 
so fun to draw these cats. I feel like I could draw them forever. And I think this is what you need to find for yourself. A topic or a theme that really speaks to you, that brings you so much joy that you just can't stop drawing. You need to be proud of what you create and not to be like, I'll create just something because it, it looks good on your feed or something like that, I think. I really like the color palette that I selected. <laughs> it's so, when I went to Crete, I saw so many green tones, um, yellow, blue, and just very subtle colors. And I'm just super inspired by that. And now I want to incorporate that into my art more and more until I feel, uh, I don't know, something else. Um, I will embrace it as long as I can. <laughs> Okay, so I created seven designs in Procreate so far. I printed them out using the same size as the size of the sketchbook. So I can transfer the design onto the paper and then can finally start painting it. Now maybe I even will like the painted version more because this will have some texture to it. So you will see. Now to color the drawings, I wanted to use gouache because I just love how matte and flat the colors look when I dry. So I started by mixing all the colors I need one by one and tested them on my printed out images to just see if the color is similar or if I have to adjust it. Because the sketchbook is like five by five centimeters, it's super tiny. Uh, it was difficult to paint accurately, so I will probably create a bigger version with my favorite designs. But let me know what is your favorite design and also what art medium you like to use the most. I always like to change things up because I easily get bored, but gouache is definitely one of my favorites and I think I will start using it more often now. Also keep in mind, if you use gouache in your art, the light colors dry darker and the dark colors dry lighter. So you always need to think about that when you mix a certain color you need. Here I was actually pretty happy how the colors turn out. So I colored everything, even the white cat, because the blank white paper didn't look that good. So I felt like it's best to cover it with the white paint on top. Once everything was dry, I also used a white Posca pen to line out a few things. This was a spontaneous decision actually. You might have all the planned out ideas, but sometimes you just get different or just additional ideas that you want to use during the process. And that's why you should never wait for ideas. It's better to just start with something, just with like any idea that you have and develop ideas as you go. Also use a very tiny, tiny black liner to create the face and all the lines and details. It was really difficult as well, but it's so cute, I think. And since I wanted to make the small book into a collection of stamps, I thought at first I would just color this pattern around the image, but when I was almost done with it, I was like, wait a minute, I have a puncher for just one hole. Why don't I use that instead? So I covered up the black semicircles again with the Posca pen and then just punched out the shape all around the paper and even in the folds. It was really tricky because it was not super accurate how much space I left in between, but that's okay. Okay, after working for almost five days on my cat illustrations, I'm finally done with my cute booklet. I have seven illustrations with the cats made with gouache. I'm super happy how it turned out. They are cute little stems and I think I will make them into bigger versions. So let me know if you are actually interested in maybe buying some of the illustrations as a poster or something like that. Please let me know in the comments so I know you're interested. I will definitely want to sell my art now. because I've been getting so many questions about it and I'm always saying no, not yet. But now I really want to work on that. And don't forget to check out my friend's video. I have the link in the description box down below. My friend Melanie from Visual Minds will show you what she did using this cute little booklet. She will tell you about what she learned, her process, and just general life advice that she actually understood during the process. So go check it out. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about this casual format. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.